This is the third part of the chapter 5. Uh, here we are going to study how to design sequential circuits. Uh, sequential circuit design goes through several complicated steps. Uh, here we give uh, a very brief outline of it. Uh, the very first step, we write the specification of the problem. Also, it's called the problem description. So out of the problem description, we construct the first uh, the state diagram. Then out of the state diagram, we write the state table. Then from the state table, we derive state equations, also called the flip-flop input equations. And then finally, from the equations, we draw logic diagram. First, uh, the state equations are to describe the behavior of the system in uh, Boolean algebra, that's state equation. So state equation is a function of a present state and the inputs. In other, in other words, uh, uh, what will be the next state uh, when a given inputs and present state? Uh, that relationship is written in Boolean algebra, that's called uh, state equations. Here we do a little bit of uh, reverse engineering to help understand the, the complicated design uh, procedures. Uh, the diagram given is a designed sequential circuit. Actually, this uh, logic diagram is drawn from the state equation. Here we have uh, three state equations, uh, and uh, below uh, another three equations are actually shortened, shortened notation. Let me expla explain that shortly. So in the very last step of the sequential circuit design is from the state equation we draw the logic diagram, but here we do reverse way to understand that process a little bit better in, uh, from the different perspective. So given the logic diagram, what is the state equations for that is uh, uh, given uh, as follows. Uh, uh, remember the behavior of a D flip flop. A D flip flop, the output here labeled as A, is the same as a input D on next clock tick. So currently, output A has a certain value, but that value will be changing to something on next clock tick. That value is the same as a input D. That's the behavior of a, a D flip flop. Then the state equation describes that uh, behavior of the entire system, including uh, the flip flops. So, so let's label uh, this flip flop as A. So let's label this is D A input. So output of a flip flop A on next clock tick. So a of t plus 1 is the uh, same as a uh, current input on dA. That's a uh, behavior of a D flip flop. But this circuit, D input has a uh, output of OR gate. Uh, and the output of uh, or the OR gate has to end the product. So, what is currently applied on D is OR of two ends. The first end, one of the input is a current value of A. And the other input of the end gate is a input X, current value. And then another end term, we have input X and the other input of the end gate is a current value of a D flip flop. So this is a applied on input D of a flip flop A. So on next clock tick this flip flop will have a this value. So that's a state equation for flip flop A. As to the flip flop B the output of the flip flop B on next clock T is a B of T plus 1. B of T plus 
plus 1 is the same as a current value on a D. So similarly, what is on D right now for the flip-flop B is end of those two things. So here one of the input to the end gate is A complement and the other input is a X. So this is a static equation for flip-flop B. And we have a output of the entire system labeled the Y and an output is end of those two terms. So here OR term one of the OR input is a B and the other OR input is a A or the together and then inverted input X goes to end gate. So this is a equation for output Y. So state equation is a set of equations one for each flip-flop and the one for each output. That's a state equation. So in general procedure forward is that the very last step we derive state equations uh, and then out of this state equation we draw the logic diagram. So at this moment uh, if the state equations are given you should be able to draw a logic diagram using D flip flop. Here is a shortened notation. Uh, function notation uh, t plus 1 and t means a uh, t plus 1 means the value on next clock tick. And the t means uh, the value at this moment, uh, current value. So, the shortened notation is that of a t, we just uh, skip that. And we only specify t plus 1 only. So, this is uh, some somewhat preferred choice uh, because this is a shortened notation. So, this is a state equation for d flip flops. Uh. State the table is uh, similar to truth table, but remember truth table is only for a combinational circuit, but here we have a sequential circuit we call state table of the sequential system. So state table is a table where you, you list all possible combination of a present state and then all inputs. And then you specify what will be the next state and the output for the given uh, input state, uh, present state is, uh, and the inputs are on next clock tick. That's a state table. Here, the state means uh, the value stored uh, on a flip-flop. So state A, state B means a uh, value of a flip-flop A currently stored. Uh, a value of a flip-flop B currently stored. Uh, that's a uh, two states A and B and uh, this is input. X is input to the system and then on next clock tick, what will be the value of a flip-flop A, which is the next state? Uh, what will be the value of a flip-flop B on next clock tick? That's next state. Uh, and then what will be the value of the system output Y? So that relationship is uh, described in a table, and that is called a state table. Actually, state equations are derived uh, from the state table. We are going to learn it shortly. State table, we have uh, two forms. Uh, uh, the, the, the table on the bottom is just a reorganization of this uh, form. Uh, here, you do not give uh, input as a separate column, but you just uh, merge them into next state and output. So we, here, you list all possible values of a uh, present state. And then in next state, uh, you separate uh, for each possible value of input. So when input is a 0, then next states are this and this, and when input is 1, then next states are this and this. Similarly for output, when input is a 0, then output is this, and in, uh, input is 1, and output is like that. So this another form of the state table is a simply reorganization of uh, the first uh, table. Uh, when you derive uh, state equations, uh, Actually, the first form is a preferred choice. From there, actually, you can directly derive K maps 
to find the simplified equations for a state. State diagram is a graphical representation of the state table. So uh, as to the information, state diagram and state table both have uh, exactly the same information, but the state table is in tabular form, but state diagram is a graphical representation. Here some convention is that you use a circle to represent a state. And the transition between states are uh, you give an arrow, and an arrow has certain labels. Uh, inside the circle, you give a name of the states and so on. Let me explain that using an example. So this is an example of a state diagram. From this diagram, actually, you construct a state table. Uh, as you can see now, we are going backwards of general design procedure. So state table is here, which is derived from state diagram. And state diagram conventions are circle represent states. So we have four states. Each state is assigned its binary number is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Those are uh, binary number assigned to each state. And the arrow represents the transition. And each arrow has a label. The label has a two parts of the numbers uh, separated by slash. So what this graph means is that if you are on state 0, 0, this arrow means uh, you will make a transition to state 0, 0 itself uh, when input is a uh, 0. And you may, as you make a transition, you produce output zero. That's the meaning of the label. And uh, this arrow means oh, you make a transition from zero zero to zero one when input is a one. While you make a transition, you produce a output zero. Similarly, for this this arrow represents uh, you make a transition from one one to zero zero when input zero is applied. Uh, and then you produce a output 1. So this transition diagram, state diagram, is uh, constructed uh, from the given problem description. Then you construct a state table out of the diagram. Okay? So this diagram, you have uh, four states, uh, and uh, each bit uh, is a uh, State. So you have two states A and B, and the values of those two states you have all possible four cases. So you list the present state, and then you list the next state when input is zero and when input is one. And so those information you can derive from state diagram. Also as to the output. When input is a 0 and when input is a 1, then you produce those outputs. So state diagram and state table both carry exactly the same information. So you should be able to convert from one to another. We have two models of uh, sequential circuits. Uh, sequential circuit is actually the same as a finite state machine. Uh, Mealy and the Moore is uh, two models uh, in sequential circuits. Uh, Mealy model, the output of the system is uh, dependent upon present state and the system input. That is a Mealy model. The Moore model is a uh, Output of the system is dependent only upon the present state, so which where the input is excluded. So that's the only difference, whether output is a function of input or not. Based on that, we have a Milley model and the Moore model. So this picture actually clearly explains the concept in the Milley machine. Output of the system is dependent upon input and then those uh, 
flip-flop outputs that's a uh, present state so eventually those present state values are used uh, to determine the output so that's called the Milli model Moore model is that you don't have a separate system output but you use uh, the values uh, from the flip-flops uh, and the use of those as a output of the entire system. That is a more machine.